Cool. Okay. So, yeah, welcome to Creative Conversations. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, and here's Day to ask you, well, first, congratulations on your anniversary. Thank you. Um, how did you celebrate it? How did you celebrate? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, I think, not in any big way, but I think the celebration is just being here in the new office and coming together again and um, uh, joining the grey D&D club. So I've been like, making my character this week, which has been really, <laughs> really fun and really nerdy. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing too, nothing too big. The, the celebration is just being able to be together. I think after so long. Yeah, cool. What and what is that? What is that um, ca little character DNA? What's the character you're talking about? Uh, well, so creating a Dungeons and Dragons character. We've got oh, D and D. Yeah, we've oh, got a serious. And club. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're long games. Yeah, they are long games. Um, we are doing a particular kind of mission, which means you can drop in and out if you happen to be busy. You're just like taking a rest in the local yeah. pub. So it, it makes it a little bit easier for me to actually get in there and play. <laughs> oh, fantastic, cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and to talk a bit about being a WPPO-owned agency, mm -hmm. um, in this sort of time of huge change in jeopardy, how would you define your role in your first year? I think, I think my role in, in my first year has been it's been really interesting and really quite exciting. I think, um, obviously, I, I joined during COVID and took this new role during COVID. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of work to be done here, both in the, with my chief creative officer hat on, really ramping up the quality of the work. Mm -hmm. um, but then with my president hat on, and actually kind of the reason that I moved into that joint role, is that looking at the, the things that underpin the making of great work. I said, you know, on my first day here, I'm not here to make the best work of my life, I'm here to make everyone else make the best work of their lives. Uh, you know, and there's a lot that had to be done kind of structurally, financially, uh, in terms of our process and operations to really allow that to happen. Uh, every agency I've been at that has done exceptional work, you know, there has been, I wouldn't say it's a formula, but there has been a feeling in the air, like, right, there's a way of being, there's that creative energy, there's, you know, that kind of feeling of being, what, what I say to the team here, like feeling of all being a pirate, pirate crew heading out into the creative unknown mm -hmm. with like excitement rather than fear um, and I would like to think that actually that building that culture not only allows you to kind of change and move without fear and you know take on new opportunities or whatever happens but it, it does lead to better work everyone's really clear they know what their roles are everyone's roles are important we're all in it together we're gonna go adventuring um, and yeah so I've, I've really spent a lot of time doing that as I said like building the culture putting the backbone of the processes the framework the operational stuff mm -hmm. in place making sure that it's not just me obviously I've got a brilliant brilliant sort of team here but, you know making sure financially we're doing okay and that gets everyone into a place where they're really they go into like briefs with excitement and mm -hmm. if you're going to briefs with excitement and you're not afraid of the client and you're not afraid of what's happening around you you do really exciting work. Um, so, yeah, that's that's been really enjoyable, actually, to be able to do. And I don't think I would have had the opportunity to do it in such a way if everything hadn't been upturned anyway because of COVID. Like, mm -hmm. literally, there was no normal way of doing things. So it was a lot easier for me to come in and go, well, why don't we just, like, totally change the way we do X or Y and see how it works? Yeah. Do you think being a creative leader sort of give you an edge, edge in that sort of regard then? that Because uh, it's quite rare for... A creative to become a head of an agency yeah. but do you think that's kind of giving you a bit of a I think it's certainly it's good because you know I really have a deep understanding of everything end to end and I have a really deep understanding of the product and I know as a creative what it takes to make great work mm -hmm. and those, those conditions that have to be around you in order for you to be able to do it so, so I think that's that has helped hugely and I think maybe I also approach things from a different point of view you know Creativity is all about problem solving at the end of the day and being able to come at a more operational problem or a structural problem mm -hmm. with a creative hat on is, you know, it's an interesting way to run an agency, I think. Yeah. I think it's like World Economic Forum have said that creativity is the skill of the future for quite a few years now, I guess. So it's kind of, it's almost like they knew what was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah actually, it's, you know, it's, it's something that now we're replicating across the network. Yeah. So, 
Francie, who's my counterpart in Germany. She's got the dual role, and I think you know we're looking more and more at the you know John Petroulas, who's you know, the creative chairman, very much has one foot in the business and you know one foot in the creative. And actually, the Global Creative Council are very responsible for the the shape of mm -hmm. the business as well as just the work. Yeah. So, what differentiates Grey in your in your mind within the WPP for, portfolio? You know, I would say within this portfolio, you know, I'm going to say that we're super creative. Of course, I would. Yeah. But I think the, the one thing is the size. We feel like a big boutique agency in a network. Not, you know, if, I mean, Ogilvy make great work. You know, all the different parts of WPP make great work. Mm -hmm. But we're, you know. We're compact. We are like a little pirate crew. We are the, the the guys kind of you know going off in the off in the other direction. I think it allows us to take more risks, mm -hmm. um, which is really you know which is an exciting place to be, right? And I think um, you know having AKQA there as as the sister agency as well, who also I have to say their attention to detail and their craft is like just banging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked <laughs> um, there for a few it's years. Nice to be kind of part of that stable because I feel like. This stable is, you know, it's really about like the craft and mm -hmm. the, the creativity, and hopefully, you know, that that will continue. So let's let's talk about that. So, um, what what comes to your mind? What what has been said about the Great London merger? You think is correct? What 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 what's, what's incorrect? What's going on yeah, with that yeah. stuff? Uh, uh, that, that's a really good question because I think, unfortunately. Um, when it got out the gate, it was really misrepresented, and actually, it was awfully represented from Gray's point of view. It was like RIP Gray. Um, you know, we're part of AKQA Group, of which AKQA is an agency. You saw AKQA Bloom launch today. You know, there are mobile agencies in there. There's architecture firms. There's product design. You know, there are a lot of agencies within that group, including, you know, um, organisations that are part of the Gray Group that have been brought in, like Tank, which is our, you know, kind of pharma healthcare side. Um, so we're kind of, I'd say like we're two sisters under the same umbrella in the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we help each other out a lot. Certainly we have different kind of levels of expertise in different areas. We work together sometimes on clients, like on Volvo, it's like very much an integrated team. On Heli Hansen, uh, you know, we're very much kind of working as, as one, even though we're two distinct agencies. And then on other you know, clients or projects, we don't work together at all because there's no need for those specialist skills. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I have massive respect for those guys, and I've, I've known them since they started coming from a digital, you know, place myself. I've kind of known a jars since day dot, so it's, it's mm. almost like lovely to be part of that that team. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I've got a theoretical question for you, and it starts with, well. Say the business growth is less than you would want it to be, and yep. there are two large opportunities in front of you. Mm -hmm. One of them is large in revenue, but completely devoid of purpose, yep. while the other is large only in terms of significance and purpose. Which one do you pick and why? No, I think that's a really good question, and what I would say, because you know, I wear both these hats, mm -hmm. is the first thing I would do is like research and study both of those opportunities to see what there really was. You know, I don't believe that there is ever a brief that's devoid of purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and even on a client that is sometimes seen as, as, as difficult or or maybe not quite right, there are, there's always like space for actually creating really positive change within that organisation, potentially, if the brief is right. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, brilliant, but you can't sink the livelihoods of, you know, 250 people by going after something just because it's really exciting so I think uh, you do have to find a balance and that's you know that's something that you do have to have when you're wearing both hats mm -hmm. um, but you know we've turned down big briefs here in the last six months you know specifically because after doing that research and digging in underneath we just we realised that there was no way to do something really positive with yeah. the particular client or the framework that we were asked to play in so you know we didn't we didn't go for it so um did you find that clients became more insular during the pandemic in a way, or was it the complete opposite? I don't know. Um, look, I think I've seen both. In mm -hmm. some ways, the relationships have never been closer because you're speaking to a client in their living room with their kids on their lap or, yeah. you know, all, all of that stuff. So there's, there's a breaking down of that kind of business relationship, which has been really good, I think. 
but the separation has meant that the collaboration is harder. So mm. had a had a face to face like proper workshop with one of our giant clients yesterday and it was so fun to do it in the room and have the work up on the walls and we were all like drawing and you know, kind of crossing stuff out and getting to a really, really interesting point really quickly, whereas, you know, we have spent the last six months just amending PowerPoints and it's been going quite slowly. So I think there's, you know, there's, there's benefits of both. I do like the fact that I've got to know my clients' families and kids and dogs and all mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and I've got a few uh, friendly sort of questions at the end here about just in general, what is your sort of creative muse or what, uh, who is your creative muse if you're looking for some sort of inspiration in your life? Um, yeah, look, I always fall back on music, mm-hmm. actually. I think, you know, f- first and foremost, like music is the thing that has always got me excited, filled me full of emotion, help me find great ideas. Even when I'm writing presentations and I get stuck, I might actually start with looking at song titles and like going going in some weird lateral way backwards into what it is that I'm actually trying to say. Mm. Um, but, you know, music, absolutely. And I would say if I had to choose a muse, it would probably be Nick Cave. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Um, you know, again, because he's been... Uh, uh, someone that I've absolutely loved since I was probably about 14 years old so fair enough and what is the best piece of grey work out so far this year in your view your favourite oh my god it's like it's like saying which of your children is is favourite <laughs> um, it takes so much effort to get a great piece of work out into the world you get so emotionally attached to them all yeah. but I would say um, I, I think the thing I'm most proud of is actually a piece of work that we did with Brooke the um the sexual health charity um, here in the UK and it actually came from two of my so, so our, our creative department here is way over 50% female mm-hmm. um, and uh, a lot of them were seeing over the course of COVID that um, they were just being sent so many dick pics like constant dick pics and they were all all getting really frustrated and so over summer last year we ran a kind of a proactive process and we were working through Oh, nope. Sorry, that's so loud now. <laughs> I think my favourite piece of current work, stuff that's gone out this year, like it's in the first three yeah. months of this year, has got to be a piece of work that we did for Brooke, who's the uh, sexual kind of wellness, well-being charity. They do a lot of work with young people and young adults. Um, and uh, it was to uh, get the cyber flashing band. Um, the, the, where, where the idea came from, and this is the reason that I'm really proud, is, you know, We've got a really diverse creative department, and as part of that, we have way over 50% of the people in the creative department are women. And all of the women in the department were kind of saying the same thing, like, we just keep on being sent so many dick pics. It's gone through the roof during COVID. Something about lockdown has meant we just get sent pictures of dicks constantly, uh, even on LinkedIn. I mean, it's really gross. (laughs) Um, And so we thought, you know, there's an... There's a real issue here to be solved. There's an issue that's affecting my staff and it's kind of upsetting them. It's sexual assault, right, to get a picture like that. It's awful and it's Mm -hmm. really uncomfortable and it's all to do with power. And why don't we, you know, do something about it? So, um, you know, starting kind of summer last year, we worked through the problem with the client and got to a really brilliant piece of work um, that almost let you feel a little bit of what the um, what it's like to re- receive a dick pic, but in a really I guess non-triggering way. So uh, mm-hmm. amazing, beautiful illustrations of bros, you know, in classic poses taking a picture of their dick. But if, where the dick was, there's a QR code, which luckily for us is now used everywhere because of COVID. So it was a really good way to transmit the message. With you wouldn't flash someone in real life. Why, uh, it's illegal to flash someone in real life. Um, mm-hmm. Why not online? You take a picture. Or you open up your camera on the QR code, um, it takes you straight to a page where you can tweet your local MP to get it banned. Mm-hmm. That really took off. We got a load of, of traction around it, um, and it resulted in it being picked up by a couple of MPs, Conservative MPs actually, um, and brought into Parliament and written into law. Wow. And Dean Dory spoke about it last week, and she even used an image from our campaign, which is really awesome. Wow. And, and Faye Jones said our campaign line in Parliament. Um, and uh, it's now on its way to the House of Lords. So we're like, that for me, I'm super proud of, because that's like proper positive change mm-hmm. that is going to 
hopefully, you know, as we move into the metaverse and there are more and more online interactions, we've now got something in law to protect people mm -hmm. who, are, you know, it's not just women, but it's, you know, very often kind of women and, and um, I'm very proud of my team for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. It's such a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Uh, see you soon. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs>